Well, my name is Zach Zabneska. I work at Enterprise uh, as a sales engineer in the enterprise uh, market. So today we're just going to go over building intelligent chatbots for helpful chat experience. To start off, um, we're going to ask why do we need a chatbot? So in my mind, uh, the chatbot has the ability to generate quality leads with the automated conversation. That way you don't have to. So I'm not sure if anybody in here stays up 24-7, but everyone will visit your website at some point in time. And like Ricky mentioned, you'll, they'll be there for a few minutes, and you have to engage them. You will not always be sitting there on your computer ready to engage an individual on your site. So that's where chatbots come in. So we're going to talk about the online customer journey, barriers, and then we'll go to the demo. So the online customer journey, um, you try to get people driven to your website, whether it's through the paid search, whether it's through organic search, um, if you're sending out social media posts and things of that nature. Then they'll land on your website, read some blogs, they'll have the newsletters, they may use a mobile app. But the one we're going to talk about right now is live chat, which is the part where you can actually create a bot or where you can digitally engage with the customer and find out a little bit more information about their wants and needs. So now we're going to go over the barriers to chat and why a chat bot may be needed in your organization. So who knows a number one barrier to adopting live chat? It's annoying, close. So you can't just sit there and hire a team of people to work around the clock for you to chat your customers that they get to your website, or when they get to your website. So what's the number two barrier to live chat adoption? Current employees don't have enough time. So even the people that you currently have on staff, they don't want to sit there and wait for a chat bot. They may be in the field. You know, your salespeople may be on the road. Uh, managers may be doing reports. You know, your bookkeeping staff, um, of course, is trying to get, the, get payment, uh, make sure everything's turning. So that's where Sales IQ comes in. Um, it's to engage your prospects or your, your existing customers. And so we have our command-based conversational bots. So what the function of it is, is to gather more information. It can perform functions like scheduling, passing data to other cloud services. It can also pre-qualify somebody that's on your site. So if you have a very niche market, um, if you're selling a luxury good, you can actually identify who's worth your time before you actually make that phone call based on a conversation that they've had with your bot. So now we get to the three things that make up a chat bot. The first is a trigger handler. Yeah. So the trigger handler for your bot keeps that from happening. It'll wait until somebody engages the bot before being useful to that individual. You can also set it to be that friend that will pop up on their screen and try to start a conversation with somebody. Then we have the message handler. So the message handler is pretty much if someone's just doing a Q&A with you, um, this part of the bot is the Q&A section. So if someone says something to your bot, it'll reply with an answer. Typically, um, examples are, you know, what products do you have? It'll just give a straightforward answer. The next thing we have is a context handler which is the more advanced message handler, because this is what actually collects information throughout a conversation. It can identify steps in that process, in the conversation, um, identify whether or not it has useful information before moving forward and gathering more. So the context handler will be the primary thing we'll be focusing on today, and we'll actually be, we'll be building live if you want to pull out your laptops now during the demo. So let's go ahead and hop to the demo. So if you guys want to build a bot with me through an interface, I've actually made a bot on this website that will assist you in building a bot. So as I talk through the code, you can ask a question to the bot. And at the end of the dialogue, it will send you that code so you don't have to type it. So that's the takeaway here. I didn't want to sit here and just type up code all day and have everybody look at it. And if you want to engage the bot right now, just let the bot know you'd like to build a chat bot. Just say, I want to build a bot. So the code we're looking at on the screen, and I'll do the same thing on the right. So I'll communicate with the bot as well as we go through. So the code on the left side of the screen is Deluge. So I'll go ahead and touch on the trigger handler, since that's the first step in the process. So in the trigger handler, um, it says, hi, I'm Winston. What can I assist you with today? Um, joke's on me. Apparently, his name is Barry as well. That's my agent's name, but I put it in wrong here. Um, so what we have is our map. It is the thing that collects the information. But at this point, we are not in the context part. So it just needs to place information in front of the customer for them to actually start the conversation. So on the right, I'll just go ahead and say, hi, Winston. I want to build a bot. 
Great. So he's going to ask me a few questions. So at this point, it went ahead and it, I engaged the bot, so it goes to the message handler. So I'll click on the message handler. So this we're going to get in a little more depth here. Um, if you notice on line two, it identifies that there's text in the chat. Line three identifies that there is an active chat happening. As we go down a little bit more on line five, basic if-else statement, um, if it includes schedule, it'll, it'll trigger that bracket and ask those questions. So hi, I'm Barry. What can I assist you today? I want to build a bot. I just want to get this over with. It also can handle a situation where someone doesn't initiate the trigger properly. So if they do say something like schedule or no, whatever, it'll start over in this message handler and try to pick up where it left off. If we go down here, the if statement, if the message is null, or if it's not null, we have another one nested in that, that it'll see, oh, someone, you know, they want to build a bot. And that's why I mentioned just say bot, because if you didn't, I would look like an idiot up here. So at that point, we've got our map for the response. So the response is capturing the information that the individual is putting back into the bot. So on the right, when I say, hi, Winston, I want to build a bot, it goes, all right, I know how to process that. This is not a null statement. They said bot. Let's go ahead and start this uh, exchange of information between me and the bot. So there's, that's the second if-else message. Uh, if it ever contains let's get this over with, it'll activate that function. And also, when we do these things, um, I'm sure we all know, working as a developer, you cannot predict every action that your users will do. So the last one is just straight, you know, if I don't know what I'm doing, I'll just straight, I'll just say, I don't understand, and give you to a human being. So if someone's being very complicated, you always have to have that option. So the third thing, the largest thing in this um, bot is going to be our context handler. So this is where it get, may get a little convoluted. So what's the first thing I want to ask? We can say, how are you? So at this point, it's entered in the context handler. And uh, as you noticed, we're able to get some text back on line six. Um, I didn't put in a name. It's just a question. But then it also asked, did I get an email? So since I want to send this to you all at the end of the day, I do have to receive an email. Unfortunately, I didn't get that yet. And nobody had, it's not a required field to fill in when you start the chat. So it's built into the context handler. Um, so it does ask me for the email. Um, it does tell me I'll send it. So I'll go ahead and type in my chat. Uh, let's see what, I want to see my zaxaholics, 2019 at gmail.com. Hit enter. So now I've got the email. Now it asked me what the second question is. So when we talk about how you have a conversation with a chatbot, and like I mentioned earlier, you may want to direct that conversation, um, that conversation flow, depending on what products they have and what services they have. So after we ask this, um, I will show an actual sales technique or an actual sales chatbot um, related to a service-based industry. But for now, we're just trying to figure out what I want to ask somebody. So I've got the email on line 13. That else statement says, all right, I do have an email. Um, we're going to go ahead and store it in the email variable. Um, but then we also have the if, the if null statement for our second answer called second. Um, so if that's triggered, it's going to go ahead and ask, you know, what about the second question? And we're going to go ahead and say, if there are defined options, we'll check those out now. Barry, who made you? So what we have on the left are these sales IQ widgets. So we have calendar. So we'll see the calendar booking function uh, within this widget. But we also have like a range slider, happiness rating, star rating, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, single select, multiple select time slots, date time slots. So all these features, um, I don't want to go through every single one of them, but it's very easy to actually drag and drop. So if I just want to put in a single select, we can drag and drop it in here. It'll ask us, you know, where do you want to store your variable? Single select, type select, our options, you know, option one, option two. Oh. and so on and so forth. So what that actually does is give you that radio button, and you'll have that in your chat. So we'll see the calendar function, but just to stop here, those are what those are on the left, are the widgets that are pretty much decision points or input points for your chat. That way, OK. 
and we'll go through. So after we get that second question, um, here's actually where you can type the debat and have a fork type question. So when, like, we, like I mentioned earlier, you've got context. So maybe in your sales process, um, you have two different products or services, or two different um, types of customers you may be working with, commercial, residential, um, that type of situation. You can actually ask, um, what, uh, what's the word, what market are you in? And if they come back and say, I'm a home, or I'm a business, you at this point will see a fork, um, which I call the fork. I don't know if that's a technical term. Um, but here, we'll go ahead and ask that third question. Um, almost done. Put an option here so we can just say, what type of business are you? So at that point, I'm just going to scroll down my page here, ignore the chat bot. Um, it's a joke, but nobody laugh at that. So at that point, we get our third question. Um, which is what business type are you? So this is leftover code from a power washing business. So we'll go through. Um, if you answer, you know, let's see. We'll go ahead and we'll change this one. So if I were to answer um, to this bot and say, listen, what type of business are you? Um, we'll say small enterprise. You can make the, um, so if the answers dot contains key, which is your uh, answer map, if that contains something like, uh, it contains the third question, or does not contain the business type key. What we can do is check, OK, we don't have the business type, but they did answer that it's small enterprise. So what do we want to ask our small enterprise customers? So we'll go ahead and change the question name, because that's our key, to business type. And then we can ask how many employees are in your organization. So since we didn't trigger that else statement on line 30 to drop into finding more information about a small enterprise, um, or excuse me, on line 33, uh, that gave us a business type, it said, screw it, I'm just going to move on to the date. So this is that widget that we saw earlier, 39 through 41. Um, you, can you can create date functions using deluge. So here's add day, if I want to add one day. So if you're scheduling, you can also pull information from a CRM. You can also pull information from Calendly using the connections function, which we'll check out as well. So if you want to perform scheduling functions with your chatbot, you can do that. So Barry's asking me when I want the session to end. Uh, me as a presenter, I was pretty nervous. I'll just say I didn't even want to be here, so it's 4.15. So, um, so we have our schedule here. If I were using this as an actual scheduling app, um, the individual, me as a chat person, would hit confirm. And it would automatically do the date, tell me thank you, and work on it says your honesty is appreciated. So um, when you do things like that, um, again, the widgets, when you perform widget functions, you can do that deluge code here. And we'll go and scroll down. Um, this else statement will check, all right, our date. We did get a date from that widget. If the date is not null, um, and it also has a hyphen, we're going to go ahead and perform a connection function. So here we'll go ahead and get the meta value or the meta data from our date. We'll go ahead and get all this information. We'll format it correctly because what we're actually doing is taking Zoho's date formatting it correctly so we can push that date into our Google Calendar that's connected to our chatbot. So you can also connect this, like I mentioned, to Zoho CRM. But the example we're using is our Google Calendar, um, because that was the easiest for me to do. Um, it was already built into the chatbot here. So what we actually do um, is we get the year, we get the month, we get the day, uh, we perform, we execute all these functions within that map. So we get all these string data sets. Um, if we ask for an address, it will get the address. The other per this parameter map is all the relevant information that Google um, Calendar needs in order to effectively create um, that in our calendar. And then we have our API response to invoke a URL. So after we invoke that URL, um, the way that's structured is you have your endpoint, you have your type post, you can also do other things like delete or update. And then we also declare our parameters to a string, because that's what um, Google accepts. And then we have to put our headers on, because Google requires it to be the application JSON um, type format. 
And then we have our connection, which is Google Calendar. Um, if you notice in the bottom left corner of our chatbot, it's Manage Connections. So we'll check that out here in a second, um, identify a couple other connections we can actually run with, um, and kind of we'll take Q&A and see what we want to do there. So what actually happens, um, just, and again, just in case my code was bad, I would always run a check out the response, make sure the status was approved, make sure there wasn't a 400, 404, any type of 533 error from we got from Google. So after we do that, we get that response. Um, if it's been confirmed, we say thank you. Um, if you notice here, I've got the email. So I've made a map. And this is how we connect to Creator. So I've made a map. I've taken everyone's email from the crowd. Um, I've taken question one, question two, and question three. I've placed them in a Creator form. And then I create that record. Um, and then at the end of the day, that last response, it puts my questions um, all in one map. So if I wanted to execute other functions beyond just chatting an individual, that response um, and that answer, those two maps, contain all the information that we've gathered today. So everything that I've chatted with Barry here will be in that map. Um, as we go through each step, we've been able to extract it, check if it's even there. Um, one thing I didn't mention is if you are going through that process, and let's say it went out of order, and I gave my name um, at the top, it says edit visitor info. So if you create requirements on your chatbot to have a name and to have an email address, even this widget would recognize, oh, I do have an email. I want to skip that email question and go to the next thing. So that's why I always, always, always never try to predict what the individual will do and think of every scenario that's, um, that a user will do to create a, good chat, a great chatbot experience. So at the end, um, I went ahead and we have the action end. So I've got that. I can say, thanks, Barry. Oop, didn't spell that right. Um, and he says, thanks for visiting that session. So that's typically what, or I guess that's how a chatbot functions. Um, and again, on the left, we have our code. Um, if you're able to follow along, you should have gotten that code. So I'm just going to go to my mail.zoho.com here just to make sure that email went out. Yeah. And then I give you blow the context handler, map equals bot. And if you notice in this code here, like I've got a variable that's called second question. So I've given you, if you filled it out, um, your question will actually be embedded in that. And then we'll actually have a lot of comments in here to let you know how, to function, how it functions. So a few things outside of actually creating this bot are the connections. So on the left, bottom left corner, um, we do have manage connections. I'll just hit save here. So I'll do that. So I've got Google Calendar um, added. So if I go to my Google Calendar, I'll have an event there. We have other, uh, the other ability to add connections to this. So if you want to add like SurveyMonkey, um, perform functions with any Zoho thing, if you have a chatbot that identifies that, oh, this isn't really a sales function or a scheduling function, someone's having an issue, um, you can push that to Zendesk. I know we're not supposed to say other products, but you can also push it to Zoho Desk. Um, but you can push it to any of these integrations and pass that data along. So if you're sitting here thinking, how am I supposed to make, or how am I supposed to work with my customer? They're using five different applications. You can also create your own custom connection, create the chatbot, and just ask them, where do you want me to put this information? So I'm going to go back out of this. Um, and on the left here, we do have the ability, like all these. So I went through like just raw code. Um, you do have the opportunity here to drag and drop, you know, insert records, get records, update records. At the top, we can do if else statements, and it'll build it for you. Um, we also can send emails directly from this. So if you wanted to send an email directly from your chat widget, not necessarily storing data and running a workflow in another application, you can do it from the chatbot as well. Um, and just to mention again, we have webhooks. So if you can't work with your third-party provider to push data to and from an open API, you can also use things like Zapier or build your own endpoint and run a webhook um, from the chatbot. So thanks for joining the session.